The second lesson in energy resource and energy transfer, section D, is on thermal energy. Now thermal energy is not a mathematical uh, concept in physics, it's, but it's very complex if people don't use the right language. So it's essential in this particular topic that the correct terminology is always used. Now we'll be looking at conduction, convection and radiation. And it's essential that in any problem you think about this using the correct words and making sure that those words are used all the time. So we'll start with conduction. Conduction happens in metals because metals have delocalized, if you're a chemist, or free electrons. So because they've got free electrons, metals are exceptionally good conductors of heat. Non-conductors are called insulators and things like gases like air or plastic or glass might be good insulators of heat because they don't have free electrons and therefore they're not, they're not very good conductors of heat. Now, in every question which involves heat transfer, it's important to recognise conduction, convection and radiation because every question will require you to state which method of heat transfer is being prevented by a particular me measure. So if we think about the next one which is convection. Now convection happens in liquids and it happens in gases and this is caused by if we have an area of heat and we have particles above this area which is hot then these particles will gain thermal energy and that will make them vibrate more rapidly and when they vibrate more rapidly the particles will spread out and that means they become less dense. So when they spread out and become less dense, that causes them to rise because they are less dense than the air around them. And as they rise, they lose their energy all the time to the surroundings. And so they, they vibrate less and they become more dense. And so they cool and they fall back down again. And this is called a convection current. Now convection currents happen wherever you've got hot air or hot liquids so if you boil a pan of water or if you turn a fire on in a house you will get convection currents all around it so in gases and liquids where the particles are free to move you will get convection currents set up in conduction the particles are fixed they're not able to move and if heat passes through them it's happening without the particles themselves moving now the other form of heat transfer is called infrared radiation. Now infrared radiation is interesting because it does not require a medium to travel. So it can travel through empty space. And what's interesting about radiation is it's absorbed by dark, matte, black objects and it's reflected by bright, shiny, white or silvered objects. Now a low level question might talk about black objects absorbing, absorbing infrared radiation and silvered objects reflecting it. But a higher level question will talk about a hot object which is giving off, which is radiating infrared radiation itself. Now it's important to remember that a black object which is hot will radiate its heat quickly whereas a white or a silvered object will radiate its heat very slowly. So for example, when I go for my break at school, if I have a 15 minute break and I need to drink a cup of coffee in 15 minutes, then I will always pick a black cup because the black cup will radiate the heat away from the coffee, therefore the coffee will cool down quickly and I can drink it quickly in 15 minutes. But if I've got longer than 15 minutes, then I will always pick a white cup or a silver cup because that will not radiate, radiate its infrared radiation as quickly and therefore the tea or the coffee inside will stay hot for longer. So it's important, low level questions on infrared radiation are about reflecting radiation away. Higher level questions on radiation are about 
emitting radiation. It's important to remember, black objects absorb infrared radiation, but they also emit large levels of infrared radiation. Okay? Now, questions on conduction and convection radiation will be typically around a context. It might be loft insulation, it might be a vacuum flask. But in any given situation, you've got to think about how is the measure of preventing heat loss preventing heat loss by addressing conduction, convection and radiation. So if you think about a famous example such as a vacuum flask. Now, loft insulation and building insulation, it's all the same principle. If I take a vacuum flask, Okay, this is my badly drawn vacuum flask. Now inside your vacuum flask, you might have a hot thing or you might have a cold thing. But for now, we'll just think of it as being a hot object. So we might have hot coffee. Now, the vacuum flask is made of glass. So the walls of the flask are made of glass. Now, in between these walls is a perfect, well, as close as they can get to perfect, a vacuum. Now a vacuum means that there are no air particles at all inside it. And importantly as well, the walls are what we call silvered. And this means that they're coated in a metal coating which makes them highly reflective. We would have a, a cork stopper or a plastic stopper as well and the whole thing would be encased in plastic but it would not touch the plastic, it would be supported by a tiny, tiny little point there and a tiny point here. But I want to look at this, these, the glass, the vacuum and the fact that the walls are silvered, so we're just going to focus on that. Now, in an exam context, if we were asked to discuss how these three measures prevented heat loss from the coffee from inside the vacuum flask, you would think about Okay, glass. The walls are made of glass. Glass is a relatively good insulator. It's not a conductor of heat. So you might want to talk about that. The next things, however, are more important. So, we have a vacuum. The vacuum means that thermal energy from inside cannot cross to this wall by conduction or convection. Mm -hmm. Conduction requires a medium through which to travel. Convection would require air particles to circulate inside the gap. The fact that this is a vacuum means that no particles are present and therefore it stops conduction and convection. The fact that the walls are silvered means that as the inside wall is silvered, Heat loss by infrared radiation is prevented because the heat is reflected back into the, into the coffee. However, if any heat did get to the other walls, because they are silvered, they are less likely to emit infrared radiation than they would be if they were black, for example. So it's important to recognize silvered infrared radiation, it reflects it here, and it doesn't emit it on the outside. The vacuum stops conduction and convection. One other thing that they typically ask, which is on most exam papers, is to do with air being trapped. So if, for example, if we just draw, I'll draw a cork stopper. Um, this might be your loft insulation question or any question on it, but you typically get a question which concerns trapped air. So the heat from the coffee convects up to the bottom of the stopper. So we've got hot air here, so the heat convects upwards. The cork stopper works because it contains air. And we would say air is an insulator. It is a poor conductor of heat. It's an insulator and therefore prevents heat loss by conduction. Now that's not enough. Because it's made of cork, it contains trapped air. And that means that the air inside the cork cannot circulate and therefore it prevents heat loss 
by convection also. It's very important you try and be very calm about these questions and think about air is an insulator, stops heat loss by conduction. Trapping the air, stopping it circulating, stops heat loss by convection. There is almost always a question which requires you to calmly and carefully explain this why trapped air stops heat being lost from something. In the case of a vacuum flask however, rather than trapping air here, we try and create a vacuum so that stops conduction and convection.